Hello, random details about how a version control system works. In this video, I'm going to talk about version tree branch commit rebase and not in this order. First, I'd like to explain commit. It's a very simple concept. You commit something to create a new version. So it's the, the thing you do to create a new version. Let's explain this a little bit more slower. Um, remember the conversation we had about the bachelor thesis that you hand over to your professor for checking, right? You check it and you give it to your professor. The initial version is called bachelor thesis number one, version number one, right? The professor corrects it and gives it back to you. Like, okay, these with like, you made some errors here, right? So you need to, and the professor said, well, this is version number two because you gave me version number one. And then you do some corrections here and you call it version number three and give it back to your professor. And then your professor gives it back to you and says, well, okay, that's good. It looks good. You can you you can use this as a final version, and then you're happy. And now let's let's take a little bit, let's take a little bit deeper look into what's actually happening when you do this stuff. Let's say, let's say you didn't even create version number one, right? What you're doing is you create initially you just create a document and you you write something, right? You you just start writing maybe here and then you and then write a little bit here and here and you save it sometimes, but you don't like necessarily give it a a version name because you don't need to give it to your professor, right? Maybe maybe on your computer for yourself, you say, okay, the initial version only had the chapters and and the, the version number zero B had maybe chapter number one only filled out and version C had chapter number two filled out, right? But the, the, the basic thing I want to talk about is that you keep writing without creating necessarily new versions. You just overwrite the same file, right? And when you're like at a at a certain like point, at a certain checkpoint, say, well, okay, this is like one one package, one one finished package that's like consistent in some way, right? That's the time where you create the version number one, right? And then your professor gets your version and says, well, you know, let's say your professor said there are three mistakes here, right? Your professor said, ah, uh, reads this document and said, ah, okay, there's a problem here, right? And after your professor made a comment on this line, she or she, they will not, they will not like make a new version from this, right? They will not send it to you and say, well, I'll fix this. No, no, what they're going to do is they're going to read on and say, well, here's another error and here's another mistake, right? So they will first like read through everything, make notes for all the mistakes. And then after that, after like the correct, like the, the, the correction reading is in a consistent state, they will call it version number two, right? And I hope you get the idea what I'm trying to explain here. This is going to happen for all the versions in between, right? You will you will not, after every letter, create a new version. You have a consistent state and then you create a new version. And this is a very important thing. And when you have a consistent state, you commit to this state. Maybe, maybe that's a nice way to, to remember this. You commit to the state. You commit to the consistency of this document. You commit to the consistency of this document. And in that case, you create a new version. In this case, the version number three. Okay, keep this a little bit in mind. I want to just uh, give you a, a little bit different way of expressing this stuff, something that you might have already seen on the internet. Um, you usually describe it as dots, like this is bachelor thesis number one, version one. And then because this is you're always talking about a time span or like time goes by, right? And speaking of time, version number two comes version after version number one. So you have version number two also marked as a dot. And you have version number three also marked as a dot. And you have version number four. Ooh, bachelor thesis <laughs> number four, version four. Okay, just to make sure we're not going too fast. All these dots are marking a commit. So this is a commit. This is a commit. A commit is basically, think of it as a version. Sometimes people say, can you please commit it? That means, can you please create a new version from it? And you have like a straight line of versions. So let's call this a version line, maybe. Maybe it's a version line, yeah. Next, I would like to talk about a version tree. What is a version tree, right? We already got a version line here, right? But what's a version tree? Um, you also, we also going to get in branches probably. Okay, let's go a little bit down. We need to get a little bit away from your, from the concrete example, or I'd like to get a little bit away from that because it's making it much easier to explain. Let's say, let's say this is the initial version. Let's say this is version number 
number one. And let's say you create a version number two. And now you're going to hand this version number two. Imagine you're going to hand this version number two to your professor and your professor makes some changes, right? Let's, let's say your professor creates version number three, right? Creates version number three. But at the same time, while your professor is working on this, you can't just wait until your professor finishes. Maybe he needs, he or she needs three weeks to, to do the, does the, cor to do the correction, right? During that time, actually, you're going to also make a new version, which is, well, version number three? Well, I don't know. Let's call it 3B for now, right? So you have now the both of these versions are based on this one, but they are completely in a different state. And at some point, just to make it a little bit more complex, maybe your professor does um, two versions. Maybe let's call it A, or let's call it 4A. And then maybe your professor says, well, here you go. This is this is the version. This is my corrected version. Take a look at it. And but meanwhile, you did version number three. So you kind of like you want to like merge these things together into into one file, right? This is basically two different files, and you need to merge them together into one file. Um, so to make this to, to show this to you in the graph, this is what's gonna look like probably kind of like this, right? So you have the ver you have the changes from or you have the the content from version four a and you put them there and you have the ver the, the content of your version three b and you put it in the same file and this is maybe let's call this the file version five this is version number five and then again you're gonna do some changes you're gonna make the corrections that your professor suggested you call it version number six and again you give it to your professor let's make it this nice pink again right your professor gets it. But, and just to emphasize that this is a tree, right? Let's say this is version number 6a. But your professor is not really sure, can he really handle this alone? So he doesn't know, so maybe he gives it to, to another friend who, like your professor already made a version, so, but he gives it to another friend uh, to also check his checkings, right? And the, the other friend, let's say, let's say makes a version, let's say makes a version 7, it's called 7c, I don't know. And but while your professor is giving it to their friend, the professor is also making a new version. Let's call it the version six B, right? And you know, this this friend kind of guy also creates a version seven D, right? And while the professor is working so hard on your stuff, you also decided to keep on working, right? You keep on working. You make so many versions. You make so many versions. And maybe you have another friend. You have another friend who who checks the stuff for you. So he, you give it to another friend, and he also creates a version. And he, maybe he creates another version and another version. But while your friend is working on it, you you also create another version and another version. And it, as you can see, it's getting like infinitely complex as you go on. And this is the version tree, because it kind of looks like a tree. Maybe I don't know. And at some point, because we're still talking about a thesis, right? At some point, all these things have to come together. So at some point, maybe maybe your friend wants to share with you what they did, right? Maybe your friend wants to share with you what they did. Maybe like this, right? That so I put it back together. Or, or, or it's like the initial, let's call it the line that's happening, right? And then from here, you have two, like on a street, you have two branches, two ways to go. You can go either this way or either this blah, 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 th, either this way or either this way. So you have a branch here and this is called a branch. This thing, let's say until here, maybe, or let's say even until here, this thing is called a branch. And also you have another branch here happening because you're branching off of this main thing here. And also from your professor, he gives it to a friend. So a friend has another branch that goes off of this branch and goes back into this branch again. But if you, okay, let's say, let's say this is all you can, all you need. Let's add a little bit of extra salt into this. When you work work with most most systems, and you at some point you don't know like which one is the, which one is the main thing, right? Which one is the main line, or which one is the main branch? That's always difficult because like, is it this or is it this? How you how you determine which is main, right? That's a very subjective topic actually. So everything is just a branch, right? This is a branch. Your branch is here, and this is a branch maybe. 
basically everything is just a branch. That being said, we also got what is a branch. Okay, let's go to the last topic, rebase. This is what, especially when you use Git, like people are uh, having so much trouble getting over or getting through with. It's also actually not that difficult. Unfortunately, my pen tablet just died, so I need to work with the mouse. Let's say we do the same. Okay, pen tablet came back to life. Okay, so let's say we have the same situation as here. And let's say mm, your professor is again like doing this and you going down here and you're having a lot of versions that you create here and maybe your professor is doing the same and then at some point you gonna merge this together into sorry to one version right and from here you can go on the problem with this is as we saw above here that you can get very complex you can have huge trees of this stuff so what you might want to do is what sometimes is, is simpler this is just we have these changes some changes were made and some changes were made down here and we like consolidate them we we, we put them together in one file right but there's sometimes there's a smarter way to say, well, we don't want to put them together. We don't want to keep the history like this. Maybe we want to change the history. And what we instead want to do, let's copy this and move it over here. And let's say for the sake of simplicity, this is the main branch. You always are on the main branch. You are on the main branch. So when you now like try to merge that stuff again, like it's getting a little bit messy and it can look a little bit messy when you talk about graphs, right? So what you might want to do is maybe these changes, they don't interfere with each other. So what you might want to do is you could do something like this. You take all this stuff that your professor did and move it one version at a time to the front until you're here, right? So actually you were working at the same time, but you pretend you didn't, right? You pretend you didn't. And then, because still your professor was working on a so-called branch, you still need to do a merge to your main branch, but now you have a, a very simple history, right? You have this kind of history. And you could even go one step further and say, well, I don't want to have this either, right? What I want to have is a very straight history. So you can do this, but this is what you can do. Right. This is what's happening. And this is what is done with rebasing. Why, why is this called rebasing? Let's go back a little bit in time here. Right. This commit here, this version here is the base version for this branch. Right. This is the version you gave to your professor. So this is the, the version that your professor uses as a as a base for their changes. Right. But what you now do is you change the base. You pretend. You just pretend that your professor actually got this version. Of course they didn't, right? Of course your professor did get this version. I think it was this, yeah, it was this. But you pretend they got this version. Why would you do that? Just for the sake of a very simple history. So when you, maybe next month, you check again what happened this time, then it's so much easier if, if the version looks like this. It's so much easier to figure out like what happened. So. To go back to this thing, version line and version tree, actually, many people, of course, this is a very subjective topic, but some people say, well, I, I prefer a version line. I want everything to be straight because it's so much easier to figure out, okay, this is very simple. Version four was after version three, version three was after version two. But when you have this thing, everything happens at like the same time. It's very difficult sometimes to comprehend, right? So this is the point where you say, okay, I want to, I want to rebase. I want to pretend that everything happened after another, even if it didn't. This is what's rebasing. Okay, I guess that was already more than enough for this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Or you see me in the next, or not even me, you can see my screen in the next video.